What's up everyone, Rob here from Mishimoto. If you haven't already, be sure to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more exclusive Focus RS content. Today we're going to install our baffled oil catch can on your 2016 Focus RS. Let's get started. Tools required for installation are 2.5 and 8 millimeter Allen keys, T30 Torx, 7, 10, and 13 millimeter sockets, quarter inch drive extension, quarter inch drive ratchet, 11 16 15 millimeter and 17 millimeter wrenches, pop clip pliers, flat head screwdriver, panel tool, torque wrench, and masking tape. Installation time is two hours. Installation difficulty is a four out of five. Ensure that the ignition is off. Set the vehicle up on an automotive lift or raise it with a jack and place it securely on jack stands. Refer to your owner's manual for safe lifting points if you are unsure. Install the plastic fittings to the catch can. These fittings are made of plastic and have tapered threads. Snug them down, but do not over tighten them. Install the bracket to the catch can and secure it with the provided Allen bolts and washers. Remove the drain plug from the bottom of the catch can. Install the 90 degree fitting to the bottom of the catch can. Install the short silicone hose to the fitting and secure it with a worm gear clamp. Slip another worm gear clamp over the short hose and install the drain valve. Slip the longer hose over the end of the drain valve and secure it with a third worm gear clamp. Ensure that all the worm gear clamps are tight and that the drain valve is in the closed position. The hoses you see here are prototypes. Your hoses will be black. Remove the eight torque screws and four pop clips that secure the splash panel to the underside of the vehicle. Take note of the two points where the splash panel sits on the subframe, then remove the splash panel by sliding it forward. Remove the engine cover by lifting it directly upward. The engine cover is held on by four press fit grommets. Disconnect the vacuum line from the three clips that secure it to the intake manifold. Disconnect the electrical harness from the map sensor and lead the harness back under the vacuum line to get it out of the way. To release the connector, depress the black tab and slide the connector off the sensor. Remove the locking clip from the vacuum line where it connects to the intake manifold by pulling the wings out and sliding the clip off the connector. Disconnect the vacuum line from the intake manifold by depressing the white tab and sliding the connector off of the manifold. Loosen the worm gear clamp that secures the induction hose to the throttle body, then separate the induction hose from the throttle body. Remove the five bolts that secure the intake manifold to the engine. Gently pull the intake manifold back towards the radiator to expose the wiring harness underneath. Separate the two electrical connectors from their mounts on the back of the intake manifold. Each connector has a groove that slips over the mount which can be removed by sliding the connector away from the center of the vehicle. Separate the PCV hose from the intake manifold by squeezing the knurled tabs and pulling the hose off the port. Separate the throttle body wiring harness clip from the throttle control motor by pushing it off. Disconnect the electrical harness from the throttle control motor. To release the connector, slide the red locking tab away from the connector. Then press the black tab and pull the connector off of the throttle control motor. Remove the intake manifold from the vehicle. Apply painter's tape over the intake ports to prevent debris from entering the engine while you work. Separate the PCV hose from the blue PCV elbow on the side of the engine block. Use a flathead screwdriver or panel tool to get the hose started and then work it the rest of the way off by hand. Be very gentle with the blue elbow and PCV assembly when removing the hose to prevent damaging it. Then separate the PCV hose from the black fitting. Locate the vapor hose in your kit which has a 180 degree bend. Slip one of the provided worm gear clamps over this end and install it to the blue PCV elbow on the engine block. Then lead the other end of the hose behind the wiring harness and coolant hose. It should lie just above the starter and hang over the front of the transmission when properly installed. 
Orient the clamp so the adjustment nut is on the bottom for a flush installation. Locate the other vapor hose in your kit. Slip one of the provided worm gear clamps over the end of this hose and install the black valve you removed earlier. Orient the hose so the bend will turn towards the transmission when installed on the intake manifold. Label the other end of the hose by wrapping it with masking tape. This will help you identify the hoses later when you go to hook them up. From underneath the vehicle, locate the hoses that you just led. The hoses should run in front of the lower harness, but behind the intercooler coupler. Slip a worm gear clamp over each hose. Attach the hose with the masking tape to the port marked out on the catch can. Attach the hose without the tape to the port marked in on the catch can. Then secure the hoses with the worm gear clamps. Locate the ear on the transmission that has an unused hole and the remaining hardware in your kit. Slip the washer over the large bolt and slip the bolt through the unused hole so that the threaded ends point towards the transmission. Install the catch can bracket over this bolt so the tabs on the bracket engage the ear on the transmission. Secure the catch can bracket with the bolt and nylock nut. Remove the masking tape from the intake ports and lower the intake manifold into place. Connect the electrical harness to the throttle body and lock the connector with the red tab. Then secure the wiring harness to the throttle motor with the integrated clip. Connect the black fitting to the port on the back of the intake manifold. Simply press it on until it clicks and rotate the hose as needed to clear the throttle body. Attach the two electrical connectors to the intake manifold. Align the groove on the connector with the mount and slide it on until it clicks. Install the intake manifold. Align the two pins on the back of the intake manifold with the holes in the cylinder head. Thread the bolts in by hand until the manifold is snug against the engine. Then tighten each bolt to 15 foot-pounds using the sequence shown here. Failure to tighten the bolts in the proper sequence can lead to air leaks and performance issues. Loosely install the locking clip to the fitting on the vacuum line. Connect the vacuum line to the three clips that secure it to the intake manifold. Install the fitting over the port on the intake manifold and engage the locking clip to secure it. Lead the harness for the MAP sensor under the vacuum line and connect it to the sensor. Slip the induction pipe over the throttle body and secure it with the worm gear clamp. Adjust the drain hose on the catch can so it will exit at the corner of the splash panel and install the splash panel over the two tabs of the subframe. Then secure the splash panel with the original hardware. You may need to adjust the position of the plastic mount on the front stabilizer bar to make it line up with the splash panel. Install the engine cover by pushing it down over the mounting studs. Well that wasn't so bad. Now that you have the can installed, be sure to double check all your connections before firing it up for a test drive. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button before you head out.